The Professor is brought to you by Trollandtoad.com and Jesus Photo and Baseball Cards. The show and its even tied goodness are in full swing, and thanks in part to our sponsors, the Professors, will be attending Worlds this year, bringing you three days of coverage and a hoy draft, artist interviews, crazy shenanigans, play interviews, and more. So order your even talk about today. Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another episode of Planes Walking with the Professors. This week as you're watching this, you'll probably have your eyes half on the new and shiny Wizard of the Coast site. However, while I know it's coming, I had to produce this episode before it was released, so info on that next week. Until then, why not check out the effects Mythic Rares are having on Shards of Alara. And speaking of Mythic Rares, we're going to take a look at Brian David Marshall's previous article on the changes coming to the 2009 Pro Tour season. So let's draw. So the pre-orders for Shards of Alara are now up on Star City Games. The artwork on the deck boxes, sleeves, and binders are probably the best I've ever seen in years. And the Imperial Archangel playmat is probably the best ever. However, there is one issue. When you check out the Shards of Alara complete set, there is an annoyance of following parentheses that reads, no mythic rares. At first, you might not be that annoyed as you see that it is only $114.99 compared to the Shadowmoor full set pre-order of $184.99. However, then your eyes flicker down the page and you see Shards of Alara completes it with mythic rares. $209.99. This means that with the addition of Mythic Rares, you're paying an additional $95 for the set. Divide those $95 by the 15 Mythic Rares and you find that the average Mythic Rare is six and a third dollars. Compared to the Rares, they are correctly about two times the price, as Rosewater explained. However, all things considered, paying an additional $25 in Shards of Alara compared to Shadowmoor that had an additional 52 cards? Oof, that's tough. And from what we've seen so far with a Johnny Vengeant, it doesn't make it any better. Brian David Marshall suggested a standard white and red land destruction deck, and I myself have been tinkering around with the idea of a Johnny Vengeant included, but I have yet to see it work. The list that I've been using was this. It got crushed by fairies, something I believe we'll be expecting in the next year's season as well. It was too slow against just about any control, true, but it did seem to trump over everything else. The manlands particularly allowed for some crazy plays, but more importantly on the turns I couldn't do anything allowed me to still trump my opponent. Fulminator Mage was obvious for the land destruction deck, and while I believe I'll be mourning the loss of Avalanche Riders, Revel Arc and Order of the White Clay are great additions. However, as for differences from what BDM suggested, I've made the deck red, black, and white, as you can see, for the addition of the Drain the Wall and a few other fetishes I've had. First is the Festering Goblin. Now, I'm the first one to be questioned about playing some weird cards, but I still believe in context and as a variant of my wacky fairy build with Remove Soul proved in the Nationals last weekend, sometimes anything can come out of left field. Festering Goblin was a great choice for the deck, as it has the ability to keep you alive in the early game. Also, with the ability to be brought back from the grave with Revel Arc, it has some other uses as well, including pushing your death force to the next level. At times, I consider changing that to Mog Fanatics, but honestly, sometimes the Festering Goblin can get the job done even better. The other card you probably noticed out of left field would be the Holy Days, right? It sounds pretty ridiculous, but when you can stop them then proceed to turn the game around, it seems alright to me. But speaking of Brian David Marshall's recent article... Last week, BDM was given the pleasure of announcing to us the 2009 Pro Tour season and schedule. Thankfully, this year, unlike last year, there will be still four Pro Tours, one of them being Worlds, which, while not actually a Pro Tour, I consider to be one because of the prize payout and Pro Tour point payout. And they couldn't be in better places. We'll be starting off the year at the home of anime and manga in the land of the rising sun, Kyoto, Japan. Then, as we go across the seas in June of 2009, we'll be heading back to Heezy Street for Honolulu. Then, finally, for the last Pro Tour of the season, we'll be heading to Austin, Texas. While not quite as exciting, a nice spot all the same. Beyond that point, assuming you're qualified for Worlds, you can then head over to Rome, Italy, for a three-format monolith of a tournament. But 
Wait. Wait a minute. World isn't the only tournament with more than one format. That's right, the Pro Tours will now be two formats, one constructed, the other limited. As Brian David Marshall said in his article, Historically, the Magic community has not taken well to the announcement of change. Anticipating your critics, what criticism of this change would you like to head off at the pass? However, both I and Aaron Forsyth agree this will be a good thing for Magic and that the players just need to give it a chance. And while we may lose our limited specialists and constructed masters, this will correctly end with the Pro Tour winner being the best Magic player, what I believe a Pro Tour should be about. Plus, as Forsyth pointed out, players still have Grand Prix almost every other weekend to attend, so I'm pretty sure anybody and everybody's magical addiction will be fed. So until next time, when we planeswalk, this is the Car Professor tapped out for now, but we'll be back soon. But stick around for the documentary, A Life of a Minju Sponge, if you haven't seen it already. I've seen things you wouldn't believe. Mendger sponges being built onto other Mendger sponges, onto other Mendger sponges. I've seen some crazy director pick me up hundreds of card heights into the air and take me to do some crazy rocky training. But with time, it will all be lost. Like Mendger sponges in other Mendger sponges. Thank you.